my name is Beth Weiss and I'm an occupational therapist and a certified hand therapist and I have practiced for over 40 years. I specialize in the treatment of hand, wrist, and elbow issues such as arthritis, strains, tendonitis, and neurological issues such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Almost all these issues seem to be related to individuals not using their upper body and hands correctly, causing overstrain of muscles, tendons, and joints. Many of these issues are totally preventable or minimized if we all learn from an early age how to use our hands and our arms correctly. The correct form is based on the concept called neutral positioning or neutral posturing. We are born programmed to use our hands and arms correctly, but then over time, through no fault of our own, we begin to use our hands and arms in positions that eventually wear down the joints and put strain on muscles and tendons. So what are the principles of neutral positioning? Every joint in our body has a resting position, which is the neutral position. In this position, joints work most efficiently. When you deviate from this neutral position, we call it awkward positioning. Neutral position places minimal stress on the body part. Some examples of awkward positions include reaching over one's head with your elbows out, behind your head, and twisting, bending your wrist, or bending forward without bending your knees. There are three main principles of neutral position. Number one, muscles are stronger when they are in their neutral position. Number two, muscles fatigue and strain sooner when they're in awkward positions. Number three, when joints are in position of extreme ranges of motion, it causes stress to the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints. For example, in the wrist, if you flex your wrist and try to grasp, it's going to put a lot of strain on those tendons and muscles of your hand. But if you bring your wrist in neutral position, which is right in this position, then you have the best function in the hand. A neutral position is achieved when the muscles are at their resting length and the joint is naturally aligned. For most joints, the neutral position is associated with mid-range of motion of that joint. Neutral is the balance point where the joint can smoothly open and close and rotate depending on demand. When a joint is in an awkward position, its muscles and tendons are either too short or too tight or long, which causes the body to overstrain, lose balance, and vertical alignment. Neutral positioning for the neck, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand allow you to utilize the more powerful muscles to perform any task using your arms. I will go over what the neutral position is for these parts of your arm. So the head and neck position needs to be in a straight alignment, avoiding dropping the head forward. When your head is in line with your shoulders, you have more power in your arms. When your head goes forward or too far back, then you lose power out of your arms. The shoulder's optimum positioning is with the shoulders back and the elbows are by your side with little to no internal or external rotation. So this is external rotation and this is internal rotation. This puts the elbow in correct position for maximum power and function. This also takes the stress off the neck and upper back muscles. So if your arms are out a little bit, that puts some stress here. When your arms are by your side, then the neck muscles are not uh, being fired and you don't have the stress in the neck. The elbow and the forearm's neutral position is where the forearm is rotated so that the palm of the hand is placed in either a neutral or up position. So this is neutral and this is up. This allows the elbow flexors to be used with maximum force, especially when lifting heavy items. When the palm of the hand is turned down, the shoulder goes out, brings the elbows away from the side, and causes stress to the outside of your elbow and all the way up to your neck and shoulder. This also sets a position of strain to your thumb and your wrist. For example, 
I'm holding this bottle and I'm holding it in neutral position. But what a lot of people do will pick up their bottle from the top and move it. And this causes strain to your thumb, through your wrist and all the way through your elbow and to your neck. So neutral holding or holding underhanded is the best way to hold this. Lastly, the hand and the wrist, its neutral position is where the wrist is at a slight extension and there's no deviation either to the right or to the left. So you want a straight wrist, a little bit of extension here, and right in the middle there's no side to side. And the last three fingers is the power of your grip. This grip is the strongest when the wrist is in that neutral position. Neutral position for the fingers is when the fingers are about 50% closed toward a fist. If the fingers are tightly closed, there's more stress to the joints. But if the fingers are more open, it requires less power from the muscles. When you combine the forearm and elbow neutral positioning with the wrist and the hand neutral positioning, the hand is set up with the best power and function. This also decreases the stress on the thumb. As a matter of fact, most arthritis at the base of the thumb is due to overuse of our thumb when the hand is out of this neutral positioning. So in my practice, I constantly educate patients about how to change their programmed bad habits to better fit neutral positioning. I always offer these two tips for their daily adjustments to neutral positioning. Number one, keep your bird wings down. That means if you keep your arms close to your bodies, your elbows close to your bodies, you'll be able to set yourself up correctly with your hands in neutral positioning. If they're out, you will grab things from the top. And number two, pretend like you have no thumbs. When you bring your thumbs off to the side, you will be grabbing objects with your fingers and keeping your elbows in. These two tips can be great reminders to stay in neutral positioning while you're doing all your daily tasks. On my YouTube channel, I have created several videos that demonstrate different activities we do on a daily basis, showing how not to position your hands and how to position your hands. I hope they help you learn how to make some simple changes to decrease strain in your body. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading new videos soon.